guys, good morning. It's November 11th, 2022. I'm Kimberly from Fact Quarter Shop and we are working on Socialites. Socialites is a program where you get a free block each week for 24 weeks at Fact Quarter Shop. It comes in three sizes, three inch, six inch, and nine inch. So you could make all three or you could just pick a size. And today's tutorial is gonna be block four. And then after the tutorial, I'm gonna have a lot of new stuff to show you and some really cute, I have some cute bags to show you. I think you're gonna really, really like what we have today. And an old quilt that like, it's a, I'm calling it the four year quilt. It took four years to do. So um, we're gonna just jump right in. So Dwell finally arrived. This is the Camille collection. It just arrived this week. I will let you know the 108s, one of them has already sold out. Um, but we have plenty of Fat Quarter bundles. This is what I am making with, this is the bundle that I'm using for my blocks. So this week's blocks, the nine inch block is Cinnamon and Cream by Fig Tree Quilts. This is Dwell that I just showed you. And the three inch is Nutmeg by Basic Gray. So this is a very easy block. Let's just talk about the block in general. So this block has three squares and six half square triangles. So this should be really easy. And we wrote the pattern using um, squares, but there's two different ways you can actually make these. So I'm gonna go through that and I'm gonna show you all the blocks together so that you can use that to decide what you wanna do with your blocks. So for the large blocks, we've got cinnamon, and cream. Isabella by Minnick and Simpson. The Flower Farm by Bunny Hill Designs. Okay, let me put them all the same direction so that they don't look so crazy. And thank you to all our sample makers who made these. Okay, so those are the three large ones. The six inch, this is Dwell. This is Blue Jean by Christopher Thompson Hale. And this one is the Emma Collection by Sherry and Chelsea. And then these two, this one is Grays by Sweetwater. And this one is Fig Tree Nutmeg. Sorry, Basic Gray Nutmeg. So when I'm looking at this, I am gonna change this fabric because I'm looking at this and I don't like this fabric. So we are gonna make one change to my block. I'm gonna take this out. Just looking at it as a whole, I think it's too, uh, when you look at this, this sticks out because it doesn't create that point. So I'm gonna change mine to just, I'll just pick another one out of my box. Um, and so it looks like all of the points really stick out. I'm loving all the blocks I'm seeing um, on Instagram and Facebook. Now I'm gonna pop up a photo of Chelsea's block because this block is by Chelsea of Sherry and Chelsea. And this right here is sewn in Delightful, Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea from Moda. That's gonna ship in February. And so the, this block is called Flirty. And this week's designer, Chelsea Stratton, is a quilter, pattern designer, fabric designer, and podcast co-host. She designed the Flirty block, a beginner-friendly block that uses half square triangles to create an ultra fun shape. These days, she's crazy about any block that has a lot of color and feels geometric. With that said, she loves how her particular socialite block has a geometric look while showing off different colors and prints that give it a fun and flirty mix. Now, these are some examples of Chelsea's pattern. So her pattern company is called Chelsea Stratton Design, and we sell all of her patterns in paper and PDF. And these are some of her newer ones. So this is Summertime, Morning Walk, and if you are gonna be sewing along log cabin blocks with me, um, you could use this layout also. Story time, I love this one. This would make a great baby quilt, like a crib quilt, if you just did that. Speaking of babies, To the Moon and Jubilee. So 
You can find her fabric at Fat Quarter Shop. It is all of the fabric by Sherry and Chelsea. She has patterns, PDF and paper, and then she designs with her mom. And this is their most recent book, Home for the Holidays, that I will be showing you a little bit later in the program. So now we're gonna jump right in. Now, all of these uh, blocks are free on the What's New page at Fat Quarter Shop. So. Today, I'm still gonna be making a nine inch block. And so what I do is I kind of ink out the six and the three because I don't wanna cut wrong. So for my backgrounds, my A's right here, I'm just gonna cut those three and a half, just like I'm supposed to. I'm not gonna cut any bigger, just because I showed y'all that already. So, I think we put the three and a half on another board. Oh no, here it is, I found it. So I'm just gonna cut two three and a half inch squares and actually the center also is three and a half. So I'm gonna pull that fabric and cut that next cause I'm gonna fussy cut that. And I will talk through all the half square triangle math because I've already seen some questions on our Facebook group this morning. Okay, so these, I'm gonna put these right sides up. It's so hard, I cannot tell which one is the right side. Um, okay, this is the right side. So this is my A. For my D, that's the center. And so when you look at it, I'm hoping that we can fussy cut a flower in the center. So that's also three and a half inches square. So I have my fat quarter. So I could do like a little, a little small flower here. I could do this one. This one looks really good. I like this one. This would be too big because when you start adding, you're just gonna see kind of a blob. So I think this one looks really good. So what I'll do is just put, well, I'll see if there's one closer to the edge and there's not really. So I'm just gonna cut right here. And I put um, on the Creative Grids rulers, they have these lines in them. And so the circle in the center is the center. So I'm just gonna put the center of that in the center of the flower. And actually I'm gonna move it over just a little bit so if I don't move, if this would be a lot of white in there. So if I move it over a little bit, and if you just kind of think about what's inside past this quarter inch, that's what you're gonna see. So I'm gonna go about right here. And you know, if you cut and don't like it, you can always cut again. So it's a perfect opportunity to fussy cut. Let's see. And right here, let's see if I cut right there. I think that'll look good. Well, I could either go down and have more green or have more white. So I'm gonna go down just a little bit so that there's a little bit less white. I don't want too much white. So that's probably the hardest part of the block is getting the center fussy cut. And let's see, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so that is my D. Okay, I'm gonna talk through half square triangle math and we do have a little insert on our, on our website. So this is a great sheet, completely free, downloaded. It's helpful to have um, in your, uh, like just basics, wherever your patterns are. So this is how you make half square triangles using triangle paper. So for this block, if you are making the nine inch, you would need three inch finish paper, which is H300. If you're going to make the six inch, you need H200. If you're going to make the small one, you need H100. And I'm going to show you how you know. So on here, if you look at your instructions, 
it says your nine inch should be three and a half by three and a half. So my un that would be your unfinished size. Anything that's before you put it in the block. So I go down to three and a half. It tells me my finished size is three inch. It tells me what paper to use. So this is a great guide. Now, if you don't use triangle paper, you could still use this and just ignore this. Now this right here is what you would use without triangle paper. So this is exactly what you need. So if you want to not use triangle paper, you can just ignore this. And this is what you need to get. This is what you need to cut for an unfinished and a finished block all the way from one and three eighths to seven and seven eighths. So this is a really helpful guide for you guys. Now I wanted to show you in the pattern, we wrote the pattern where you just cut a three and a half inch square, two three and a half inch squares, sew directly in the very center, trim part of it off and you have a block or you have a unit. But instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use six squares of triangle paper because I'm gonna make two and save one. So I'm gonna take six, and I know that it's six because my pattern says six right here. Yeah, so that half square triangle sheet is really good. And then here, what I'm gonna do is cut this long, I'm gonna cut the longer seam and I'm trying to be as exact as possible because if you cut too far away, you're, everything's gonna be inaccurate. So I'm gonna just cut these, taking my time. And I try to get the cut right in the center of the line so that you, when you cut it, you don't see it on the left or the right. You can just put them under there so they don't roll away. So let me know if that makes sense on the half square triangles or if y'all have any questions, but that guide is a great tool. And if you use it for a while, I think you'll get used to the math. Okay, so for now, we're gonna make six. So I have my fabrics. One, two, three, four, five. And then this is the fabric that, well, I don't know where this came from. Oh, this is the fabric I had. So I don't, I don't love that fabric. So I'm gonna take that out. And what I'm gonna try to do, this is a great tip, is I'm going to try to have a different print in each. Now these two are the same print, but they look different because of the color placement. So those are fine, but I wouldn't do a green dot because that's a gray dot. This would be really good, but then I would have to change the placement. So I wouldn't want to do a pink or a blue. So pink, blue, gone. What would be good is a gray. That's kind of light. Maybe a... So yeah, I just kind of scroll through and see what I find. That one would be really cute. I'm gonna do that one. Even though that's my second blue, that's okay. I'm gonna do that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So feel free to change. If you don't like something, just change it. I am just so weird. I know it drives my employees crazy. I do not like working with these kind of prints. I hate them. They're low volume, and that's why I'm using them to make some economy blocks that I'm going to auction off. Well, I might auction that quilt. I might give it to my sister-in-law. I have to decide. Um, depends if we can find her a Christmas gift. So for here... What I'll do is open all six of these and just find a corner that's not cut into yet. So, and I kind of just lay the salvages because it makes it easier. And these are all starched and ironed, so I would definitely iron. Make sure there's no creases before you sew. And this one I've already cut out of that side, so that's good. 
And just remember, use whatever you like. If you don't like darks, don't use darks. Use whatever. Um, feel free to always change. So right here, what I do, instead of trying to figure out what to cut, I just put a little paper on and just cut around it. This, I just, I don't even think, I just cheat. And there you go. So then I'll fold these back up neatly, put them in my box. But now I need six background squares to go with this. So this fabric is driving me crazy because I can't tell. So here I'm going to just cut little pieces. Okay, I'm going to cut a strip. I'll save this. Well, I'll actually chop these off to make it less messy. And then I'll just cut squares. Now see, there's a little crease right here. I'm gonna avoid that crease so that I don't have to worry about um, ironing it. And that crease right there, I don't wanna have to worry about that either. So I'm gonna cut over here. And I'm keeping them face up and then this one, so. I mean, that's wasteful, but that's, that's what I do. I always order extra background because I do stuff like this. And then this one, so I'm going to do one, two, three. That whenever I buy a kit or anything, I always just buy extra background because this is the way that I cut. Okay, so now... Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take my design board. I have all of my background pieces right side up. I'm gonna just double check. And you're gonna see this is all choppy, but this is the way that I piece because it is much easier to cut bigger pieces, just sew it together and then cut it down accurately after instead of having to cut accurately first, trim down, it's easier to cut this way, let me start over. It's easier to cut this way and use triangle paper than it is to cut exact, make your paper, and then have to trim again because you're cutting twice. So to me, this is the way I do it. And I just wanna make sure my fabrics are right sides together. And I'll just pin once. And we're gonna make six of these. Now doing it this way, you're getting two half square triangles instead of one. But in my member video in December, I'm gonna show you just making a bunch of half square triangles that are left over. Oh, ta-da. So this is uh, my half square triangle board. So I've got some that are already sewn together, which is what this is gonna be, an extra. Some that need seams, some that are pressed, and I'm gonna make a half square triangle out of this, and then they're gonna go in my bucket that I have going. That's kind of a mess, um, but it's a mess because I go from home and here. And at some point in 2023, we'll make a quilt out of it, but that's why I'm making two, because I can add it to my bucket. So the most important thing when you're working with half square triangle paper, and I know I've gone over this a million times, so y'all are probably annoyed, but make sure you cut accurately. Make sure your fabric is nice and flat so there's no creases. And when you're trimming after, we just trim really accurately so that we don't have to trim down. And right sides together. I can't tell you how many times, even though I say it on video that I at home sew wrong sides together. So everything's cut and ready to go. What I'm gonna do, these are my B's and C's. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna use an open toe foot. I'm gonna put my stitch length shorter than I normally would. So if you stitch with a 2.0, you would change your stitch length to maybe a 1.5. I stitch with a 1.5 because that's just a new thing I do. So, um, I'm going to stitch with the 1.0, which is super tiny. Now, when you're working with any kind of foundation paper, if you use a size 90 needle, you will get better results. 
and the shorter your stitch length, the easier it is to pull the paper off. So let's go to the sewing machine. I'm definitely gonna answer questions, so just throw those questions in. I will definitely get to them um, when I'm cutting all this down, but let's go sew some lines. So from here, I'm going to cut down, I'll just use a square ruler, and I'm going to cut one side at a time. It's actually easier to use a mat that turns. So I'm going to cut, and I try to be as accurate as I can because if you cut too big, your triangles are going to be too big. If you cut too short, your triangles are going to be too short. So I'm going to cut all of these. It's important that the four outside sides are cut accurately. The center can be, doesn't have to be accurate because that's your seam allowance. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. So once I do this, I'm going to keep two stacks, one over here and one on my design board. That way, I'm going to try to make it neater. It drives me crazy to look at this mess. Um, well, I'll just do this. That way it makes it easier and I'll explain what we're going to do and then I'm going to answer questions. So, are the Jolly Bar free patterns only in the fabric pre-cuts or are they also in the Jolly Bar books? So they first come out in the Jolly Bars only. About two to three years later they will come out in a book. So they remain exclusive for a long time to the Jolly Bars. When you rough cut your fabric before putting on triangle paper, are you worried that your pieces won't be straight or on the grain, on the straight of green? No, I don't even pay attention to that. To be honest, I don't even really know what that means. I know that sounds horrible, but no, I just put it wherever. And there have been times where I've had to put it on the diagonal and done weird things where it definitely is not on the straight. I mean, I try to make sure it's somewhat... Is one fat quarter bundle enough for socialites too, or do we need two? I'm using one. Do you know when you will be getting more by Annie Patterns? Yes, we ordered some this week. If you have a specific one 
um, put it in our product request form and I can make sure that we have that on order. Can you explain why it's better to use a size 90 needle? Yes, so it is, I think it's a thicker needle. So it goes through the, it goes through the, the paper thicker. And also sometimes if you use a size 70, your needle might break because it's too fragile. So, I mean, I also, you could also use 80. I just use 90, it punctures the paper better, if that makes any sense. Okay, crazy question. Do you ever iron your triangles on a roll before sewing to make them flat? No, 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 no. That, that would scare me. I'd probably put a wrinkle in them. But I will tell you that you could iron these now before you take the paper off and the paper will come off a little bit easier, but I don't ever really feel like I need to do that because my stitch length is so long. Are you planning on future evening lives? Mondays was live, was fast and exciting. Um, we still have to see how it did, but if we do, it'd probably be once a quarter or twice a year, something like that. If I'm making my socialites with Tilda Chic Escape, what background would you use? Okay, there are some Tilda solids, and I don't know exactly what they're called, but they have um, some solids that match. And since her fabrics are so unique, um, I, I would use one of hers. Did I get the message about my basket? Yes, yes, thank you so much. I got about 10 messages about the basket. So yes, thank you so much. Yes, I can get some more baskets at Ikea. You could use the low volume in the center and the center print as a half square triangle. I could, I still find this to be too light for a half square triangle. For me, I'm super weird about it. And I think it's because when I started quilting 20 years ago, there was a lot of dark and light. There really was not a lot of medium. And so that's kind of what I got used to. And I, one thing about me is I am a creature of habit. I don't like change. Um, and when I get used to something, and if it works, uh, kind of my philosophy, and I always tell my kids this, if it works, do it. If it doesn't work, change it. But don't change something if it works. Okay, so this one, cut a little bit off. Okay, so do you mainly use fat quarters to make your quilts? I never know what to buy. Okay, so I, my favorite pre-cut is actually a layer cake. My second favorite pre-cut is a Jolly Bar. My third favorite pre-cut is a fat quarter, and that's kind of weird to say. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my board for, and I'm gonna pull the paper off. And the best thing to do is just pull the paper. I mean, if you've cut, if you have stitched really a tight stitch, it's just gonna come off. If it doesn't pull off like this, then that means you need a shorter stitch length or a sharper needle. And these are gonna just go on this board, and I'll talk more about this board in December, but that's just gonna stay there. I'm not even gonna worry about those today. Now what I'll do is take the rest of these, and these will be the ones in the quilt. Does it dull your blade cutting the triangle paper? No, I don't think so. I have to change my blade about every four or eight hours, and my needle about every eight. Am I headed to Lori's? Yes, on Sunday I'm going to Lori's. Yes, I am. How much my background should one have in their stash? Um, I can show you my background stash that I have right there. Um, and I'll show you kind of what I have, but it's just left over. So this is just left over from quilts, and so it's just random. This is actually from my house. This is just left over. If I was going to start a quilt with a brand new background, I usually start with five to eight yards. So from here, we're going to go and iron this. And you can either press toward the dark or press open. And this is a very beginner block. So I would definitely think this is beginner. And then um, do I do I use a separate rotary cutter for paper and a separate for fabric? No, I don't. And then thank you to the super chats. We've got Glenna Eastwood, 
Thank you for all your do. I'm inspired every week. Oh, thank you. And I know you're going to love what we have after the break. Oh my gosh. I was inspired this morning. And then thank you to the super chat from Maria, Mary Aria. And then, um, so there is also another question about Karen from Karen. How do you manage background yardage? How much do you cut off at a time? And how much do you set aside for uncut setting pieces? So if I am sewing just a block, I'll cut half yard at a time and starch it. But I do cut my length of fabric all at one time. And then here, I'm going to, sorry, someone's making me laugh in here. Okay. So I put this little background piece down so I don't ruin my pretty board. So I'll stack these two at a time, set my seam, and then I'm gonna just press to one side. And when you're pressing, if you put the edge of your iron right on that seam and just press, you're gonna get the best results. So right there, press. I'm going to put a clapper on it. Oh, and you know what? Those are the same print, even though I said you shouldn't do the same print. Well, I did. Okay, from here, I'm going to cut off the little dog ears. I, they might be called something else, but what I want to do when I cut this is if you cut it like that, you have a little piece extra right here, which will get in your seam and mess it up. So make sure you cut it all the way. And I'll just put these on the side and clean them up later. And it's easier to cut these before you press open, but if you're not pressing open, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm gonna press open. I'm gonna press open with my finger and then press it one time on the top. That makes sure it's completely flat. And just do that on all of these. Now right here, that looks a little funny. We're gonna take that over to the cutting table and make sure that it's right. My iron is hot today. It's really hot. Okay, I'm gonna let these sit because they're hot and I'm gonna go look at this over here. So this should be three and a half. Okay, can you zoom in, Jordan? So like right there, do you see where that splits? That might be where I cut it wrong. It might not be. So what I'll do is put the diagonal line on my ruler there and it's fine. I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh, cut it down. I have a lot of clappers. I have uh, about four at home and I have about three here. And um, okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the ironing table and lay out my block. But just, if it ever looks funny, just check it to make sure. Okay. What I'm going to do here is follow the placement. Let's see. Make sure these are right side up. Okay. 
Okay, so let's see. This is the new one, right? So that would go there. This one would go here. And then we're going to make sure I have this right before I... This is the hardest part. And what I like to do is point. So like dark, 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 dark. So I know it's in the right spot. So now what I'm gonna do is put these right sides together. And I'm going to pin before I go to the sewing machine. And then we'll sew this row press and then add the next row and then it's kind of we're going to kind of chain piece it a little bit and then come back to it and so see how that has that hole you just consider that part of the block And then we're gonna change to a quarter inch foot, change my stitch length to a 1.5 and stitch down with a quarter inch foot. Okay, now I'm going to keep those chained together. Press to one side and then press open. Now, if you are following the pattern, you can just follow the arrows. You don't have to press open. It's kind of just a new thing that I'm just pressing open all the time. Yeah, so for the person who asked what clappers, on the set I have two large Riley Blake and then one small, and that's plenty. At home I have some different ones because um, some people have mailed me some. And I really like them because they're six inch square, so those are really nice. Now I'm going to cut these apart just because I don't want it to pull when it's going through the sewing machine. And then put this right sides together and we're going to pin. Now you could also pin at the sewing machine. If I pin at the sewing machine, you won't be able to see. And some people don't pin. If you don't like to pin, you don't have to pin. I just pin because I feel like I get a more accurate result, especially with half square triangles. And just keep dropping y'all's questions. I will definitely answer them. So from here, I'm going to press to one side. Press open. I'm going to go run and look at some of the questions that are in the chat. 
Um, somebody asked about steam. I use steam all the time, but I have starched everything so it's already shrunk. I like everything to be really nice and flat. How do I not burn my finger? I do burn my fingers. Um, I don't know how I don't burn my finger, but I do sometimes. <laughs> Let's just say that. So here I'm going to leave this one attached and pin here. I do burn my fingers. Now, I know there is like a little strip stick you can use and you can put your seams on it, but um, I found that it's still the same. Like I didn't get a result. I didn't get a result that I thought was good enough to justify buying that. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Okay, now here I do need this seam and this seam to line up. So I'm gonna poke my pen through there, make sure it's at the point, and put it here. I don't feel like that. Let me, I'm gonna eyeball this one. This one's kind of weird because the green, there's white right where that is. So I'm going to sew this one and then I'm going to stay at the sewing machine, pin this one and attach it and then we'll be done. My seams lined up perfect, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pin here. And right here, if you're doing polka pin, if your seams start coming out, then just do a shorter stitch length. And then I trim that little piece apart because if you don't, you can't press open. Or you can press open, but it'll have like a little hump. I'm going to still set the seams. So I'm going to set the seam press this way. Set the seam press this way. That way I don't interrupt or iron over other sections, if that makes sense. So set my seam. Press to one side. Set my seam. Press to one side. Now here at home, I would let the clappers, I would do this. That's what I would do at home. But we don't really have time to do that. So I'm gonna hopefully not burn my fingers. So I'll press open now. And after I trim this, later what I'll do is put the iron to it hot and then let the clapper sit on it just so that it gets really, really nice and flat. And you wanna always press the front Okay, so now I'm gonna trim the edge. Now, thinking about what we did last week, the feedback I got was that y'all didn't really love it so much. But you could also cut this, this one was cut three and a half. You could add a quarter inch and cut it three and three quarters. And then when you trim, it would have a perfect corner, but this also has a perfect corner. So that's just a tip if you wanna do that. And what I'll do is use my Creative Grids ruler and use a line on the, whatever ruler you're using, use the line on the ruler to line it up. And I just like to get just the tiny bit off. I don't like to have the strings on it. And then when you turn it, line up the top. 
this one came out really good today. I'm impressed with myself today. And even some experienced quilters don't even do the steps. So Teresa does a lot of our step outs and she doesn't do the steps. So it's not 100% necessary. It's just something I do. Okay, so from here, you can see I changed one color. So this one, is, it's more, it's darker now. So if I had to redo it, I mean, you know, these are the same print, probably shouldn't use the same print. I wanted a gray, but I didn't feel like the other gray was dark enough. And then if I would've put a gray here, I would've had a gray here and here. So, I mean, you can overthink your fabric choices again and again and again. How do I know? Because I do it all the time. When this is in a full quilt, nobody will notice. I do think, I, I do like this though. That came out good. So now I'm gonna answer questions. Again, this is Socialite's Flirty Block number four by Chelsea of, Ch Sherry and Chelsea. Okay, Pamela asks, has Kimberly ever used the pins that are like a fork? Yes, so one year, I hope she's not watching, Lori bought me some and she sent them to me and she's like, just try them. And I could never get them to work, so they're still at my house. I didn't throw them away or anything, but I couldn't get them to work. Do you find the pin that went through your machine the other day? No, I didn't even look for it. Maybe Jordan can do that. Oh my gosh, we'd have to turn it upside down. Yeah, we probably should get that pin out. <laughs> That's funny, I didn't even think about it. Roberta said, could I explain again the pressing open and tearing the one seam open? Did I hear that correctly? So when I press open, can I have a half square triangle for my bucket so I don't mess this up? Sorry. I don't think I used that word right. So just press it open and then don't tear, tear the seam open. So this, I just press it to one side and then kind of finger press it down and then iron over it. Let's see. Thank you to Melinda Taggle for the super chat. Is there a pinning truck? Trick, I always seem to pucker when I get off when I pin. So that's, if you're getting puckers, then that probably means you cut too big on one side. So that's probably what that's from. It's probably not from pinning. Do not steam pre-cuts. Kimberly does, so it's okay. You can do, so like the biggest thing um, that I always wanna teach or do whatever works for you. If you like it not steamed, don't steam. Do whatever works for you. I just show you what I do, um, but everyone does it different. Uh, Lori doesn't steam. She doesn't steam ever. She actually uses vintage irons um, that don't have the steam capability. What are my background colors for Dwell? Um, I'm using 55276-32 for my background. My binding is gonna be 55275-13, and my backing is already sold out, I think, but it's 108006-11. And I am gonna use the same background right here throughout. For Simply Stars, the half yards, can we starch? Yes. Kimberly had mentioned she needed something to help hold the small seams when pressing. Clover has the hold it stiletto precision. Okay, Clover has the hold it precision stiletto for this purpose. Okay, well, we'll order one. I hope we can sell it and then I'll try it and see. I tried the strip stick that was recommended and I just didn't love it. Um, they, someone said Lisa Bonjean uses that a lot. So, um, but like I said, everyone does it different. So you could definitely try that. So I know she starches her fabric. So is that is why she uses steam? Because I read that steam stretch the fabric. Okay. So let me have a piece of just random fabric and I'll talk through steaming, starch, and all of that. Perfect. Can I have one that's starched? Okay. Perfect. So Sorry, I'm gonna take a drink because I'm thirsty. Okay, so I starched this on camera a couple weeks ago. Okay, so this one's not starched. When I pull it, it is very stretchy. 
Okay, when I start this one, it doesn't stretch as much. And this way it doesn't stretch at all. I mean, that's not stretching at all. See how much that stretches? So let me tell you, okay, so if you starch or you pre-wash your fabrics, you would start with this, it would shrink it. If you starch, it will shrink it. This is shrunk, so it's a little bit smaller. It's barely any, it's like an 16th or eighth of an inch smaller. When you steam, it's, it shrinks your fabric, but if you've already starched, it's already shrunk. So when I starch, that pre-shrinks everything. So if I use steam or don't use steam, it's not gonna adjust the size because it's already starched and pre-shrunk. And um, there's just a huge difference. But it adds a lot of time to your project. You know, some people don't like that. So hopefully that answers the steam, no steam. But basically, if you starch or pre-wash, whether you steam or not does not matter because it's already pre-shrunk before you start. start. And um, someone's asking if you can starch five inch squares. You can, but you won't have five inches. You'll have a five inch by four and three quarter inch piece because one side will shrink. One side will stay the same and one will shrink. I happen to never use unstarched fabric. It drives me crazy. I don't enjoy the process. It starts, I stitch really fast on the machine. So my fabric, it'll just kind of start moving. I'll get frustrated. So I'm kind of wasteful and I'll just buy a bigger pre-cut. And so I don't have to worry about it. Do I ever make quilts from the fabric in the sew sampler boxes? I personally don't. Um, I could sometime. Um, thank you to Sally's Rock. She says, thanks. Katrina, the half square triangles you are saving, are they all the same size? No. Most of them have come out to two and a half. I've got a couple one and a half and a couple three and a half. But I'm just going to stick with the square sizes of the ruler. So most of them are coming out one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. And I don't have anything designed yet. I don't have anything. Um, I'm just going to make a big basket and figure out what to do. Have I ever tried the, so, the swing gauge for your Juki? I see you switch between open toe and quarter inch. I haven't, I think sewing gauge. I haven't, and the reason why is I just, I get the perfect result switching the feet. And again, like I'm a creature of habit, but I sew really fast and with that guide on the foot, when I sew, my fabric doesn't move. So I feel like I get really accurate results. And like I said, once I get an accurate result, I don't like to like mess with it or jinx it or anything like that. How does my favorite background dot compare to the dwell dot? More white, more cream. Mine, is there one in here with it, you think? I bet there's something in here with it. Let me think. I don't know, let me see the stack. Um, I think that one of my blocks in that cubby probably. Nope, that's not it. I think the dot is brighter on mine, on the one that I like, and it's more spread out. Um, and we have a lot of either, we have a lot of yardage on either of them, so. Let me just kind of look. Okay. <laughs> so this is 20708-36. This one is 55276-32. So this one's brighter. I The dots here are bigger. And the dots here are like very uniform, like horizontally and vertically. And then this one's scattered. So my the one I like is brighter, but to be honest, I like both. And we have both in stock, so that's good news. Any special plans to do with Lori? Yes, we are going to a couple of stores. We always go to Quilted Bear. We're gonna go to Shepherd's Bush. We're gonna go to a craft center. We're gonna go to a couple other stores that I don't wanna admit online, um, cause it would make me look bad. Um, but there's some stores there that I really like in Salt Lake City better than Austin. So we're gonna go there. 
and we're just going to hang out. When I starch and the quilt is final, do I get the crinkle? No. It goes away after quilting. Okay, so awesome. So um, can you go back up? Okay, so now we're going to take an intermission, and I will be right back, and we will have lots of fun stuff for you. So I'll be right back.
with me. So, uh, I wanted to let you know that this week on our blog, The Jolly Jabber, we released a holiday gift guide for quilting. So, definitely go check that out. Um, we didn't want to show all the pieces just because we have so many quilts and I know you're going to like love the quilts that we're showing. So um, you definitely want to check that out. And then today um, Kevin set up this. So if you purchase $50 of a shippable item, meaning $50 of like patterns, fabric, anything over $50 without shipping, you will get this free. This is a bag of buttons. It's called 71 count stitch cute little button bag and it's while supplies last and it's only through tonight at midnight central time. So I just wanted to let you know that that is something Kevin's doing today. And then also he wanted to let me know, let you know that he's going to have some early Black Friday specials on Monday. So watch the newsletter Monday for special deals and make sure you sign up for the newsletter so you're the first to hear about the latest specials and it's good to be on the newsletter list for like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of that. Okay, so so um, I wanna let you know next Friday's live stream is pre-recorded. It's block five of Socialites. So in that video, all it is is the block tutorial and nothing else. I'm gonna be at Lori's house. I might be on a plane at that time, I'm not sure. And then the week after is Black Friday and I'll be filling your orders in the warehouse. So the next two weeks will be a little bit different, but I will be back the week after. And because of the next two weeks being off, I have a lot to show you now because it's all my progress for the next, for this week and the next two weeks. So let's jump right in to like all my progress, all my sew alongs and my tips. So the first one, and I haven't seen any of you sewing along with me. So I am like so obsessed. Nobody's sewing along with me. I thought this was like the greatest idea ever. So on page 27 is this quilt. And this was row one. And um, I have Teresa piecing these together for me. So she put together row one. I'm gonna, I'll just leave it here. So row one, I'll just put this here so it looks pretty. So row two, let's talk about row two. So I'm gonna show you uh, how my design board looked before I pieced. And what I did is I used seam line glue and you can see that glue there. And I glued all the pieces down to keep everything in place. These are really small, so keeping the leftovers would have been too small. And so um, I also did quarter inch markings to help with pinning and accuracy on the next photo. So there you can see I measured a quarter inch away and that if you put, do your poke a pin like I just showed you and poke in each of those seams, you're gonna get accurate results. And then the last picture is uh, it all put together, which is actually right here. So, and then these are my sashings. And so Teresa will, next time we come, Teresa will have this all sewn together. So this is row two. Now row three, you might wanna have some chocolate before you do this one, cause this one is really hard. Um, I was about to pull my hair out when I did this one, let's just be honest. So I'll show you my design board before I pieced and same thing. I started with um, one corner square, those were all too small so I used glue. And then the next photo, is it done? But what I did is I, I glued one side, stitched, pressed open and then added the next side. And then I did put like a background in here that's different than the background out here. You can hardly see it, but these are like red, these are brown, and this is just an all over. This one's really hard. I would recommend, you know, using those markings, pressing open. Let me show you how they're pressed open. I mean, it's a lot of tiny, tiny pieces. So this one was a little frustrating, but that was okay because I went to row four. And row four was so easy. So if you wanna see how that looked before, I just laid out my blocks all on one board and just sewed them together, chain pieced, and 
Ta-da, they're done. Yep, all done. And so this one, just so you know, um, I'll show you it complete next time we come back because by then we'll be totally done. So Teresa's gonna sew it together for me. Um, and that way when we come back, we'll have it all sewn together. And I'm using Fresh Fig Favorites. And this is just something fun. Like when I see, and this is what I would, I would suggest to you guys. If you see something that inspires you, figure out, oh, what is it that you love about it? So for me, I love the design. And I loved, when I looked at the size, that it was 27 by 36. And I thought, you know, that's really cute. I could probably hang that somewhere, like maybe hang it off of a bookshelf or kind of like they did here. And I thought it's really cute. What do I have in my stash already that I could use? So that's what I did. I just, you know, figured out what I had and made it work because I'm using, I think I used three charm packs. You really only need one, but who doesn't have three charm packs in their stash? Another thing you could do is like, this is Kansas Troubles fabric, I think. If you had three different Kansas Troubles charm packs, mix them. If you had three different fig tree, mix them. If you have three different Bonnie and Camille, mix them. If you have three different Lori Holt, mix them. It's just really fun. And this one is really, um, I find it fun because it's it can all be done really easily. The only hard part was this. So, and the acorn glue, she says I put top on after each use, but still gets dried. Okay, so at home, mine has never gotten dry, ever. I don't know why. In the office, it gets dry. No idea why. I'm gonna pull a pin and I'll show you how to unglue it. But like, let's see. So it did come out this time, so it didn't dry this time. All you have to do is just use a pin. Put, it's not, and then twist it around and it should be fine. But it's, it's funny because at work, one place it gets dry, one place it doesn't. So, um, I'm gonna wipe my finger off, hold on. Um, oh, did I see that Riley Blake released the 2023 block challenge schedule and fabric requirements? Oh my goodness, no I did not. Christopher, please email me all that. And Denise will look later. Oh my gosh, no I didn't see that, but I, I will sew along. I have no idea what it looks like. I have no idea, um, but yes, I will. I always try to support everyone. So yes, I will do that. I haven't seen it. Do I ever get frustrated with a design and put it in timeout? Oh, I have a quilt that I'm gonna show you that was put in timeout for four years. <laughs> so yes. What piece did I say you trim to avoid the bump when pressing open? It's when you have, I'll have to show it to you. It's kind of when you have weird angles. I can't think of an exact unit, but it's not like half square triangles or anything like that. I'll have to think about that and show it to you next time on Social Lights. If I remember right, you mentioned trimming different when you're getting ready to sew your binding on. We're gonna cover that in a little bit. Denise is not gonna let me forget to show you, but yes, I do do that and I have an example I can show you. Oh, thank you to the Bethola. Hey there, Kimberly, so looking forward to the Christmas box. Thanks for all you do. Yes, the Jolly Box, it's almost sold out. So yeah, I looked at that this morning. Okay, the next sew along is hosted by me and Lori Holt, Scrappiness is Happiness. And I'm gonna show you the future blocks because I'm gonna be out of town. So last week I showed you block one and block two, which I've, this is block two. And there is a video on Lori Holt's channel. It's called Calico Mushroom Quilt Block Tutorial. And Ashley has linked to that in the description box. This week, this is this block, Chex Mix block. So this is for November 14th. And so my biggest tip here is in the book, if you look at the color, this is a great page for inspiration for colors. And what Lori did here is she did like red, yellow, blue. You could also do some different things because this block has a lot of possibilities. You can use, um, the blues like this, you could do diagonal rows of colors. So you could do like one, you could do five, five colors. So one color, two colors, three colors, four colors, five colors. 
one color like this or scrappy. And not only that, well, this one has two colors, so it's got two, but it's one color. But you could do 13 different prints, one background, or 13 different prints, 12 different backgrounds. So lots of possibilities. And what I did here is I just pressed to one side and my tip on this block is to cut these strips half an inch, a quarter inch, half inch wider. And that would mean that the top and bottom would have to be wider too. And then trim down with a Creative Grid seven and a half inch square ruler. So this one's pretty easy. This next one, I had a little issue. So I was actually in a bad mood. Let's just admit it. I was in a hurry. I think one of my kids had made me mad. It might be that somebody has lost our handheld vacuum cleaner in the house because they got mad at me. It's not even a joke, It's I'm, we're serious. So we had a handheld vacuum cleaner. I made my kids donate a bunch of stuff to Goodwill. They didn't like it. And somehow the vacuum cleaner from one of the rooms disappeared. I couldn't find it. And now one of my other kids told someone, I'm not gonna say who, he told them, oh, I got mad at mom, I threw it away. Now I don't think he threw it away but he hid it somewhere in the house. So when I was doing this block, I was frustrated. So it's funny how when you are sewing a block, you remember things like that. But this block is super easy. Um, you could cut these bigger and trim down if you wanted to. But one thing I wasn't thinking when I made this is you have to put one side on first. So, so that you get the look of like bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. I wasn't paying attention. And so when I first did this one, I did it the opposite way. So just pay attention when you're doing it. And then um, that is the crisscross block for November 21st. So that is Scrappiness is Happiness. The next sew along that I'm doing is Oh Happy Day. And this one is a Cory Yoder book. And on this one, all of her blocks are 12 inches, but I decided to make mine six inches so this is this block and this one's pretty hard i would say it's pretty similar to the other one so um can we zoom in so yeah so i made this six inches instead of 12 and what i did here is these are all one and a half inch finished half square triangles so h150 or two inches unfinished all around and then here, what I did was I cut these one and a quarter inches. And I think I guessed on that, I wasn't sure. So I think I guessed. So that's what I did on this one. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna show you all the blocks together. And this one's gonna be a cute little small quilt. So it's gonna be fun. And this is actually the size, this is the size, this is the color of my kitchen. So I was thinking I could put it um, like on the bottom. I have a little fireplace next to the kitchen. It's not in the kitchen, but I thought I could like put it on there and put like a bucket on it. It'd be really cute or put it in a bucket coming out. So that is Oh Happy Day. And then this one is Home for the Holidays home for the holidays and this is how my quilt is going to look and thank you to the person on Facebook who made theirs exactly like mine. I'm so excited that somebody liked what I did. So this is block five which is crystal sky and on this one I did my typical cut my hourglass bigger. So I cut my hourglass to four and three quarters, cut on the diagonal and trimmed down to uh, trim down with the Creative Grids three inch ruler. So these are all trimmed down. Now block six, which is next week is Amaryllis and I haven't done it. So I will show you when I get back in town. And this is that block. And I probably haven't done it because it's one of the harder ones. And when I'm sewing, I have this tendency to do, I do a lot of the smaller ones easy. I cannot say my words right today, I'm so sorry. I sew all the easy ones first to get them out of the way to feel accomplished. And then I'll attach, I'll tackle the hard ones at the end and give myself more time. 
So I'll show you that next time. And then this one is block seven. It's the mistletoe bear paw. And so on this one, I just did reds opposing, greens opposing. I put the pink in the outside. And then I used a two inch finished triangle paper for these. And on this kind of block, this is the best block you can cheat on. Just cut all of this bigger on the outside and trim down. And I used the 18 and a half inch creative grid square ruler and my block is perfect. So these are like the best blocks ever when you can add that and then trim down. So how many sew alongs am I doing right now? Oh my goodness, I have no idea, a lot. Probably 12, 21. Oh, 23. I think it's 23, actually. Yeah, somebody just whispered. Yes, it's 21 or 23. Uh, this is the Quilting Life Block of the Month that started in January. This one's free on aquiltinglife.com, and she does these every year. So on this one, this is the 6-inch version, and to cheat, I use the 1 by 2 inch flying geese paper for this. Just paying attention to where the paper went and then I use the one inch finished for these so this fabric collection is flower pot by Layla boutique it came out it might be all sold out but it came out in January or February of this year so since I started it earlier in the year that's what I have and we have one block left and then I'll show it to you all finished. And then the next one you guys have seen, this is Primitive Gatherings Mini Alphabet Quilt. So this one says presents. I'm gonna show you the words. And then the next time you see this, this will be all quilted. I'm gonna, cause if I show it to you unquilted, I don't think it's gonna look good. So these are the new words from the last. So now everything has been published on the Moda Fabrics blog. And this one, you just use the letters from the Primitive Gatherings mini alphabet pattern. It's available at Fat Quarter Shop in either paper or PDF. But these are my last words. And then um, Teresa's actually gonna sew the quilt together for me and then send it to the quilter. And I used Christmas Stitch. So cute. So this one's been a lot of fun. This one was a little bit difficult. This one right here to get that look. Do you want to zoom in and see all the little pieces? Do I have my blue... Uh, someone's asking what the background is for Home for the Holidays, and I was going to look at my book. Let's see. 46. 37644-32. Okay, this is simply delightful. It's not coming out until January, February of next year, and I'm using their background. So it, it's not out yet, so sorry. Okay, now I'm going to show you Bliss, and I'm going to show you, um, this is row one. We've kind of already talked about it. This, these are the patterns that come in the Sew Sampler box. So this is blocks one through four. Block five. And then this is block five. This is part of the setting. This is part of the setting. So this will go like here. Block six and block seven. So basically, um, I'm seven twelfths of the way, I can't do the math on that, so I'm, I'm almost done. So these, I use triangle paper to do those, and then flying geese paper. So really fun, and I, I love this collection, um, and so I'm gonna have, I think I'm gonna have like 10 collections out of it. I think it's the Fresh Fig Favorites. Okay, so now I'm gonna answer questions and then we're gonna show 
quilts. Let's see, how do I store my fabrics to keep them organized? 23 is a lot to keep track of. So I use drawers, I have these four, eight, 12 drawers. I put them in drawers and then I bought a new cabinet that has these big drawers and so I keep them there and then I bring them to work. Denise keeps me organized. We have, to, we have this software we use called monday.com and so for every sew along we have like a board and it's like, this is the collection, this is the background, this is the binding and then each step it, it is like block one and then what I do is I put my notes in there and I'll put if I've sewn it, that kind of thing. So we have these boards that keep track of it. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm very organized. I used to be much more organized when I didn't have 23 sew alongs, but yes, it's very hard. But one thing I've been doing is I'm making the blocks and then Teresa's putting them into the quilts for me so that I can do more. And really, it's really just because like I could do it. It's not a big deal, but like I bring it here and then I go take it home. And then when I would take it home, I would forget one fabric and then I'd have to come back. So it's just easier if we just assemble them here. What fabric did I use for the Oh Happy Days? Buttercup and Slate Coriander. What fabric would I recommend that's tone on tone light gray? I think a C715 gray is great. There aren't papers for the hourglass block because to do that, I think it's wasteful. You would have to have a piece of paper here, a piece of paper here, and then you sew it together. But hourglass blocks are so easy to do without paper. You just cut your squares bigger, like half inch bigger, and then use a square ruler to trim down. Lori says she doesn't worry about placement in that scrappy star block. Adds interest. Yes. Let's see. Pi says, um, thank you for the super chat. Am I strange for not liking pre-cut fabrics? Jelly rolls, charm packs, mini charm packs. And the pre-cuts, I thought it was too small a variation in light and dark. Yeah, you can do whatever you think. Um, the goal of the pre-cuts and the reason they kind of came about is so that you could get a little bit of each fabric. Where do I keep all the quilts I've made and how do I store them? It's a hot mess. So I have some in the entryway. I have them all over my house. I don't even know where they're at. We're going to try to organize them, but I have a whole cabinet here. And my new thing is I've been trying to auction them off. And then I have a sister-in-law that's really hard to buy for, like, we don't really know what she likes. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, some people are just hard to buy for. So I've been trying to every year give like each sister-in-law something different each Christmas just to like, I just like making them, but I, they're everywhere. It's a mess. I have a trick to keep your glue from clogging. Before you put the cap on, give it a little squeeze to blow out anything in the needle and then cap it so nothing in the needle spout will dry. That's a great tip. I'm gonna have to try that. Okay, so now we are gonna show the four-year quilt. So, this is Halloween Fig Sampler. So a little story about this, and I'll show it to you while they um, lay it out. I started this quilt four years ago, and we'll show the backing too. So I started this quilt about four years ago. And when I started it, I love the binding. I started it. And I started it, I bought a, I signed up for the block of the month through Joanna's website, which is Fig Tree Quilts. And I got about nine months done. And then life kind of took over, meaning I had too much to do for work. So I set it aside, but I love this quilt. So last January, I gave my last three or four blocks to Teresa and had her finish this quilt because I wanted it done. I had done most of the work. I just, honestly, this is a lot. Like adding this would take an hour. This would probably take five hours. It's just a lot of borders. And I really wanted it finished, so Teresa, I paid Teresa to finish it for me. So this is an example of a quilt that I started. I loved, it even has applique, and I even did the applique, which is amazing because I don't do applique. 
but I eventually finished it. Um, I think Teresa must have done this one because I don't remember doing that. But this took me four years. So this is an example of a quilt that I started, I love, and I set it aside and finished it. Now I'm gonna show you what I did on the backing, which I don't remember what I did. So we'll see if we can, and this fabric is all, oh, I do remember this. This fabric is all discontinued. So this was like Halloween figs, all hollow, all hollow's Eve. So I think I had extra blocks or something and I just did a, I don't even remember. And uh, Maggie Honeyman from Dallas, Texas quilted this one for me. I love the quilting. So I'm so excited I get to take it home. So that's the first one that came back from the quilters. The next one is back except for the binding. And so I'm going to show you, oh, it says, how do you make your binding look like candy cane stripes? Do you cut it a certain way? It's either you, you cut it on the straight or the bias, it depends. So we're going to zoom in here and show you. This was the question we got earlier. Now, Maggie Honeyman quilted this one and Teresa did the binding. So this is how you do the binding the way that I do it, is I cut, I put my binding, so basically you can either put your binding to the edge of your fabric and cut a quarter inch away from the binding, or you can inset this a quarter inch away from the edge. So you can see it's a quarter inch away, and to do that you can just draw a line. And then I cut a diagonal on the edge, like you could cut a little snippet. And then when you pull this back, it's nice and fat and there's no emptiness here. So this is how I do my binding. A quarter inch away so that this will tuck in and be really nice. And this batting is Quilter's Dream 8020. And I'll show it to you kind of sideways. So this is Lori's Prairie Flowers Bed Runner. Um, it's a free pattern for the layout. And then these are the different block kits from the flower seeds. So, and Teresa made this one for me. And then the back, oh yeah, Teresa did this. Okay, so we came up with a new thing. We meaning, not me, Teresa. So, she decided it would look better if she made the label and then hand quilted it down using that same technique, except instead of using the, what's that strip stuff I use? Hot, the hot hammer, but then there's like a little fusible I use. I don't remember what it's called, but instead of using the fusible, she just pinned this stitch witchery. So instead of doing that, she just folded it under hand put this down, it looks really good. And the binding I always use two and a half inch wide and my favorite layer cake pattern is layer cake lemonade. And then I have one more back from the quilter. This one is gonna be the November YouTube video for members. And it's um, a smaller quilt. And if you're a member, you can look forward to this free pattern and tutorial on our YouTube channel in November. Maggie Honeyman quilted it. It uses a Jolly Bar. And the same, now we're gonna zoom in. Now this is a way you can put your binding with cutting your batting a quarter inch away from your quilt. And same thing, Teresa put this on for me. And let's see the backing. Oh, and then Teresa did a really cute label on the back. So she did, uh, she hand sewed this down. So that is called, oh, it's called Jolly Stars. And this one is a Baptist fan design. I tend to like Baptist fan. And then we have two tree skirts to show you from staff members. So the first one is made by Kate. It's the collection is Christmas stitched. The fab, the pattern is charm pack Christmas tree skirt, which is a low price PDF. 
This one was quilted by Susan Smith. And you can find information for this on our blog. This is the Christmas Stitched Collection. And this one, she cut a hole. And so there's different information on how to do that on our website. So that's one Christmas thing that you could do for this Christmas. And this one, she machine did the binding so it was quicker. And this one's really cute. I love this fabric. And then the next one is called Joyful Jelly Roll Tree Skirt Pattern. It's also a low price PDF at Fat Quarter Shop. Both of these are exclusive to Fat Quarter Shop. And this one was made by Jessica. And then this collection is Holly Jolly by Urban Chicks. And it's also low priced, but what's amazing about this, and I never thought about this until today, literally until today. She didn't cut a slit because if you're using a fake tree, you just put this around and then poke the thing in. So I'm thinking all those years I made tree skirts, I didn't need to cut a slit because we don't have a real tree in our house because I have me and one of my kids has really bad allergies and we would just be sick the whole time which is actually a funny story from my childhood because one time I begged my father, please let me have a real tree, please let me have a real tree. And then we went to, a, we went to his friend's house, cut down a tree, cause he had, he lived in the middle of nowhere. His name was Kenneth Wilson. They brought the tree home. My mom was so angry. She was like, oh my God, everybody's gonna be sick. She was so mad and I was sick all Christmas and she was like, I told you so. This one, she has a cute video on a reel. You can find a little cute video. She used a bowl and cut it out. And just so you know, if you're doing this, you do need to use on the bias uh, binding so that it will curve. And then this week on our YouTube channel, we released a video called Huge Fabric Sneak Peek for Spring Summer 2023. And I wanted to show you yesterday I started filming a video where I took some of that fabric and turned it into blocks. So this is our free brick house pattern. This is Lori Holt's Scrappy Strings pattern from Scrappiness is Happiness. And this is the low volume six inch paper by Lori Holt. So just something to look forward to if you want to see a sneak peek of what fabric is coming out from Moda, Riley Blake, Free Spirit, and other manufacturers. And now I'm going to show you what's the flash sale for today. So at Fat Quarter Shop, every day there's a flash sale. And this one is Blue Breeze. It's um, 10 inch squares and it's from Wilmington Fabrics. So I'm going to, this one should have duplicates because their fabric collections are smaller, meaning they have 20 pieces rather than 40, so it's got a lot of duplicates. So I'm gonna flash through and show you all the fabrics. So it's kind of like a watercolor look. There's about two of each. The Quilt Factory pattern Good Morning Sunshine is also one of our flash sales. We have a cross stitch pattern for flash sale today called Red She Said. And then this one's really cute. It's Little Ducklings Mini Charm Pack by Paper and Cloth, who's a new designer for Moda, and it's a baby collection. My labels I purchased from Sweetwater on their website. Just type Sweetwater Quilt Labels. Wouldn't you lose points doing your binding this way if there is no border? Yes, you would, but that had a border so you can do that. But if you, all you have to do is cut a quarter inch away from your quilt top if you, if you have points. And then the little ducklings, blue, greens, grays. So really cute for a little baby. So that's our flash sale for today. And remember to start checking next Monday for early Black Friday. Now I'm gonna show you some new quilts we have. These are not on sale, these are just new items. So this is gonna be so fun. So this first one, 
This is the Bee Gingham's Bee Happy Dish Howl. It's digitally printed and it's canvas. It's really big. So you're gonna see it's expensive. Well, it's because it's really big. Um, see. So there's, there's four, they're like little towels. So they're supposed to be to make towels. That's what they're supposed to be for. But I'm gonna show you what, I, what Teresa did. And I saw somebody say we all need a Teresa in our life. Yes, we do. Teresa knows how to do all kinds of things. So I loved this panel and I especially, really what inspired me was this. I thought, you know, I want something with this. So I asked her to take these four towels. So one, two, three, four, and make me some bags. And I said, just have fun, do whatever. So she got the, the zipper pack she's using four of the different zippers and she's making me four bags so two of the bags are ready so this one right here is um that one that i just showed you and so this is canvas she followed our video called easy how to make an easy whip project bag with vinyl and zipper and so this vinyl is from by annie and this zipper is from lori and um the only difference is it's a different size. The reason it's a different size is we went from the panel and this quilting is amazing. And she did all that on a, a Zuki machine. So this is the first one. And then she just pulled fabric from the store, you know? And then this is the other, the second one. And these are two different collections. So like B plaid, these are probably from the B plaid collection. This is from Vintage Happy and she used a lighter print here so i'll show you the other two when um when they're done these two are going with me out of town to lori's house though i'm taking them home today so that is so exciting and thank you to Teresa for doing that so she just followed a video and it's and it is canvas so it's a little bit thicker but i still think it would look fine in quilts so really cute the first quilt we're going to show you is called Painted Ladies. This is a Jolly Bar pattern and a Jolly Bar kit. So if you buy the Dwell Jolly Bar, you get this free pattern. You could also buy the kit. It's 72 by 72. You can pull it. It's a Jolly Bar kit. Angel made it and Angel designed it. So Angel does all the designing on our Jolly Bar quilts. And Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti quilted it. And then I'm going to show you the binding, the backing, and the label. And Dwell, just so you guys know, just like Nantucket Summer, it's selling like crazy. And I mean, it's going to sell out. So let me find the labels about right here. So I think she has an embroidery machine. And since this is called Painted Ladies, she had this embroidered. She probably embroidered it first and then um, added all the squares first. So super cute. And again, 72 inches square. You can buy the Jolly Bar or the kit. The next book is a fabric kit, not a quilt kit. So this one is from the Jolly Bar 4 book. It is the cover, it's on the back. So this is called Frills. So in this, you get the fabric to make it. You do need to buy the book separately. This one's 54 inches square. Crystal designed this one. Angel sewed it. And Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti quilted it. And then this is how far in advance we work. So Angel made this on May 8th. So we made this in May. It is November, so May, June, July, August, September. So six months in advance is how far we work. And so that's also another thing that sometimes you guys don't understand is we don't know how things are gonna sell. We made this in May, and now we're just now getting the fabric in November, so you don't ever really know. I already showed you the Dwell Fat Quarter Bundle. <clears throat> Those are not gonna last very long. <coughs> but that came in earlier this week. This is a new collection called Songbird, a new page. The designer is Fancy That House Design, and it's navies, teals, 
auburns, golds, blues, pinks, and creams. And it does have a religious theme to it. So that's our new half yard bundle. And then these next ones I'm gonna open. This first one I love is Be Mine Valentine. And it's so cute. The designer is Janet Wecker Frisch. And this is so cute. I haven't made a Valentine quilt and I just might have to because this is so cute. I love anything vintage. So it's got little vintage cards, floral. And so when we, when y'all ask that question, you could cut this on the straight to get a straight binding. If you cut it on the bias, you get a candy cane stripe binding. So it depends. And some stripes are printed on the straight grain. Some are printed for, uh, diagonally, depends. And designers change it from time to time. So this one's kind of like an all over, but it's got a label. It's kind of cut up. And each back quarter would be slightly different. Big hearts, small hearts. So lots of reds. So you got like pinks, your reds, and then this is like your whites, and then I'll show you the blacks. I'm gonna show you these. I just think it's so fun to look at this fabric. So that one's similar to the first one. It's just a white background versus a pink. And then this one, and those are vintage postcards. This is a great white on white. I, I always get upset if a collection does not have a good white on white because then I find it hard to make a quilt using half square triangles, flying geese, that kind of thing. This one's that same as the red. So like I said, they'll all be cut differently. This one's cute. This is the same, but gray. The same as that first one, but a gray background. And then these are really cute. This is the gray. So I think with this collection, always think about that rule, the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule applies to a lot of things. But if I'm looking at a fabric collection, I'm gonna take the 80% I love, and I'm gonna take the 20% out that I don't. So don't be afraid if you look at a collection, if there's something you don't like, take it out. And save it, you know, you don't, if you take the black out, you could save it for another quilt, um, so that is Be Mine Valentine, Janet Wecker Fresh from Riley Blake. This is At First Sight by Danny Mogstad for Riley Blake Designs. And um, I don't think we have a half yard bundle of the newer white on white, but we have a lot of fat quarter bundles of white on white. So I would just search white on white or Ashley could link you to some because we actually have a lot of those in stock now. Oh, somebody wants to know if the butterfly block from the back is from a book that Angel did. So we'll have to have Ashley answer because off the top of my head, I don't know. I should have thought about that. On the binding, when you trim the corner on the diagonal, do you only trim the quilt and the edge of the binding or the edge of the quilt? I just, I'll, we'll show a up close of that trimming. Now this one, you could do a lot with. If it was me, I would take this out. But, that would also look great. and that would also look great. So just never be afraid to mix and match. And this next one, oh my gosh, I love it so much. This one is so cute. I don't, 
I don't I don't have any little kids anymore but if I did I would want to use this one okay this one is totally haha -ha, I opened it okay this one is called Bumble and Bear by Sandy Gervais this is Sandy she's so cute okay so this one is um, bears and bees and very kid friendly or yeah I mean I guess you could make it for an adult too little castles okay look at these bears they're so cute they have hats and bows really sweet colors and there's so this is like a pale yellow greens more yellows this is that same print really cute I always love when designers come out with groups that kind of stand out and aren't the same as always this would make a really cute scrappy strings quilt this would just make a cute little P quilt little P are our easy fat quarter patterns and um, I like that it has the brown because if you wanted to do like a take maybe a um, what's her name that does the pieced patterns the um, she's a Robert Kaufman designer and she does the animal piece patterns Elizabeth Hartman you would have brown for the brown bears if you want to make a brown bear you would have the brown for the, fa the faces um, is that set considered low volume I would consider that low volume right there and then okay so we had talked a while ago about any of the older collection that Riley Blake is still keeping in print keeping bundles in stock so we did that but then cozy Christmas about 10 of the pieces sold out including the white and when I looked at the delivery date from Riley Blake it wasn't until March of next year so I took a little bit of the red as much of the pink as we could get and just a little bit of each color to do a smaller cozy Christmas bundle and it's called festive cozy Christmas and when all of the pieces come back in stock we'll be able to make that big bundle again but this is just to keep um, you having something and then I'm going to show you this binding and we'll zoom in and most people don't keep this extra quarter inch batting you don't have to it's just something I do So if you look, it's like diagonally, it's like a 45 degree. I don't know, I'm not good at degrees. Maybe it's 60. I don't know, I'm not good at degrees. That I would, I did really good in geometry, but that was 30 years ago. So you just trim that. And what that does, when you fold it over, you get a perfect 45 and if you had not cut that out right there you would have too much bulk right here and right here this is a great question Rebecca said who is behind the so Emma is it actually a person named Emma yes it is my fifth Kevin and I's 15 year old daughter named Emma my boys sometimes say why don't we have a company named after us and that was started way before that was started when Emma was a baby so um, we have little pea patterns that's named after Peyton will and Christopher we haven't come out with anything yet but I am hoping one day that all my kids have something named after them but Emma is our daughter is that considered low volume okay I answered that will I ever have my own quilt labels I doubt it I'm not a copier so I don't take something that somebody else did and copy it that's like a big no-no to me now if Sweetwater ever retired or stopped doing it would I do it sure but I'm not going to compete with somebody who's already doing it they're making their living doing it that's how they get paid 
that's just a no-no to me. Like, karma, it's a pain. It's a, and it will come back and get you. And I totally believe that. I know that's weird, but karma, you have to do right. If you do right, the right stuff will come back to you. When is early Black Friday? It starts Monday. And my binding is two and a half inches. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun with you today. Remember, next week, I will be at Lori's. So it will be pre-recorded video on block five. The week after will be no, no video, and then we'll be back. But what I wanted to do is do a giveaway of three binders. And since I'm not gonna get to see you, or three 2023 Lori Holt planners. So since I'm not gonna see you before Thanksgiving, what I would love all of you do to do is to comment and let me know what you're thankful for. Um, I'm thankful for all of you being wonderful customers. I'm thankful that my family is healthy and intact. Um, but I would love to know what you're thankful for and just always remember, try to be positive and always try to think about what you're thankful for. The more you focus on the positive, the more positive of a person you're gonna be. And I'll see you guys soon.